r slash ask reddit what facts about history will never be taught in school the u.s government went to war in guatemala over bananas hitler's nephew served for the u.s in world war ii the diary of anne frank included a lot about masturbation and self-exploration but it was edited out here is an excerpt of such a part of the diary until i was 11 or 12 i didn't realize there was a second set of labia on the inside since you couldn't see them what's even funnier is that i thought urine came out of the clitoris when you're standing up all you see from the front is hair between your legs there are two soft cushiony things also covered with hair which press together when you're standing so you can't see what's inside they separate when you sit down and they're very red and quite fleshy on the inside in the upper part between the outer labia there's a fold of skin that on second thought looks like a kind of blister that's the clitoris the tulsa race massacre in the early 1920s tulsa oklahoma had a very affluent black neighborhood called black wall street basically many african americans were doing better financially than whites white folks were angry about their success and wanted their land an african american was wrongly accused of assault by a white girl and the whites used this as an excuse to attack the neighborhood including dropping bombs from world war one era planes many were killed and beaten over 10,000 people were left homeless due to houses and businesses being burned down this is the greatest single incident of racial violence in u.s history that argentina pretty much eliminated the black race they had ways to get rid of the men first not as much for the women though once the male to female ratio drastically dropped black population the women were pretty much forced to sleep with white men in order to wash out the black the black population was so low the argentine government pretty much removed the black option as a race crazy how they succeed captain bartholomew roberts the pirate gave his pirate crew a bedtime Go to have your 8 hours so you can make that pillaging tomorrow. Well, until I saw Lincoln. I had never heard of Thaddeus Stevens, who seems to be a much greater believer in the equality of men than men it. Ben Franklin once wrote a thorough essay about how it's better to date older women. That you need to remove the whole good guys and bad guys mentality and actually less ring to accept different moral standards of the past. For example, in UK schools when the empire is covered it's from a perspective of how bad and evil it was. Yet when it comes to Romans, Saxons, Vikings etc. It's more about what happened and the consequences without any direct judgement given. The Romans are covered for their historical impact to the British Isles. Not condemned for their brutal suppression of the natives. Vice versa. In World War II it's all about how great the allies were in defeating the Axis. They would never cover stuff such as the Dresden bombings. How much in common we have with people of the past. Pictures, sculptures and carvings going all the way back showing sex, drugs, drinking, partying and graffiti that you would see on an abandoned building or train today. The plight of the middle class and class struggles versus the upper class is the same today as for thousands of years. If we could listen to a court jester, their jokes would ring true today more than likely. Outside of technology making things faster slash easier in a sense, we're still doing enjoying complaining about most of the same things we have been for millennia. Those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it and there's nothing new under the sun is real. Native Americans weren't granted citizenship until the 1920s. Chinese Express Wu Zixin required people to please her orally as a greeting. How bad the rape of Nanking was. About the lost children of Francoism. These children were abducted from Republican parents who were either in jail or had been assassinated by nationalist troops during the Spanish Civil War and Francoist Spain. These children were then given to families that would practice Catholicism and nationalism. However this lasted after 1975, when Franco died. By then this practice was already a trafficking business run by nuns, doctors and nurses. My mum is a lost children and she has told me that almost anyone has found their parents. The Holodomor, Ukrainian genocide, where millions of Ukrainians starved because of government control of farms. Literally anything to do with Polynesian history. It took me an anthropology class in college to learn about human zoos. That is zoos where white people paid money to see aboriginal people from various regions in cages. It happened all over the world, including in the Bronx Zoo in, like, 
the 1920s. I had never heard about anything like that in any schooling before that, and I doubt most people have. Turkey genocided Armenians. Most of the world was really into butt sex until the Abrahamic religions took over. How there was one a time called 2020 and people went crazy buying all the toilet paper, but forgot the condoms, and that kiddies, is how you were made. How Britain and France screwed up the Middle East for 120 years. Okay I got a bit of backlash for this post. Yes while the Middle of East could have changed this, the French and British definitely did contribute to their instability. Hitler gave his soldiers meth because it was performance enhancing. The Japanese military kidnapped hundreds, if not thousands of Korean and Chinese women during World War II and forced them to be sex workers for the Japanese military. Some Japanese women were even drafted to be comfort women, but they didn't know what they were being drafted for until they were there. It's actually a pretty common thing in many wars, because the military wants to keep the soldiers pure by kidnapping these women. They know that they aren't riddled with STDs. It's very sad, especially because when the war is over, many of the camps are cleared and these women are forced to find their way back home, without even knowing the war is over. If they aren't too afraid or ashamed to go back home, they're usually turned away from their families because they are so ashamed of what happened. If you go back far enough, everyone's ancestry contains rape at some point. Korean comfort girls and women who were forced to be sex slaves to the Japanese soldiers before and during World War II. Gandhi was kind of a dummy hole. World War 1 equals the Great War Part 1. World War 2 equals the Great War Part 2. The Cold War equals the Great War Part 3. Proxy Wars. The War on Terror equals the Great War Part 4. 100 years later and it's still ongoing. My Chinese tour guides who were in their mid-twenties did not know about the Tiananmen Square Massacre and Tank Man. They looked at us time we had three heads when we asked about us during our visit. Stalin's son killed himself in a concentration camp yet Stalin mocked him until his death. That the Atlantic slave trade was fed by fierce African tribes enslaving and then trading off less fierce African tribes to the ships that took them to the colonies. Europeans kept dying of disease when trying to penetrate too far inland in Africa. Coastal Africans would capture slaves, or acquire them by trade themselves, and then trade them to the Europeans for manufactured goods, and cowrie shells, I guess. The Heart of Darkness is based in the Congo Free State, which was presided over by King Leopold II of Belgium. Conrad wrote the story in part as a critique not just of European imperialism but also of the atrocities and crimes against humanity perpetuated during that time. It is estimated that between 5-10 million of a roughly 20 million population died during Belgian rule of the Congo Free State due to a combination of famine, disease, and forced labor. Belgium enriched itself through forced slavery and coercion, using strict quotas for the harvest of natural rubber and an individual failing to meet a quota was punishable by death. For me personally, we read a book in high school, but we never learned the historical context or about King Leopold's part in all of this. In America you're not going to hear a lot about the shady shit the US government did to its own citizens in the 1950s and 1960s. Project MK Ultra was the code name of a secret CIA program that involved all sorts of crazy shit that most Americans have heard of but don't really know a lot of details about. And some of the stuff done under this program is so unbelievably weird that MK Ultra is a punchline in some circles. And that's just the one that's common knowledge. There were programs set up where the government would inject uranium into people without telling them in order to see the effects sometimes directly into their sexual organs. You need to dig deep into some weird rabbit holes to find information about stuff like this. And a lot of time you need to sift through all sorts of conspiracy theory BS in order to find the actual story. And even then you can't be 100% certain that what you uncovered is real or fake. But so it's pretty well established that in the 1960s in particular the US government was up to its elbows in some pretty bad stuff involving its own citizens. And you'll never hear anything about it even in college level courses unless you have some really groovy instructors. There was no famine in Ireland. It was genocide. Anything to do with Sumerian culture. It. A lot of people that didn't pay attention in history class. 
war crimes your own country committed. I think this is something that generally isn't taught. The triangle shirt waste factory fire. I learned about it in middle school. Then a professor mentioned it in college and no one else in my class heard of it. Then I stumbled upon an article to use as a teacher. None of my co-workers had ever heard of it. It's had a huge impact on safety regulations. Edit. Apparently my district just failed. I'm glad so many of you have learned about it. The CIA proposed committing a false flag terror attack which included shooting down a fake passenger jet as an excuse to invade Cuba. JFK rejected the operation. That Franklin Roosevelt supported Mussolini and said something along the lines of how he wished he could emulate him back home. Obviously, we can ignore the rest of the efforts that the US put into helping the Nazis. Both Roosevelt and Stalin wanted to execute every single captured German soldier. Winston Churchill nipped that in the bud and said something like no, I will never execute somebody for fighting for their country. The US was responsible for hundreds, if not thousands, of rapes throughout Europe during World War II. The only people ever charged were black people. The US tried to enforce racial segregation within the UK and Australia during World War II, even going as far as ensuring that they did not purchase from any shop that sold anything to black people. This resulted in countless fights between British and American soldiers. One American died in Australia as a result of these fights. The black Americans stayed hanging around with the British and Australian soldiers which had minimal racism. African history gets pretty crazy. I'm writing a paper right now about how the British handpicked Idi Amin to run Uganda after Uganda had been independent for almost 10 years. Idi Amin ended up being a brutal dictator who killed about 500,000 people in Uganda. The British contributed and may have even facilitated the overthrow of Milton Obote in favor of Amin because Obote was introducing policies that would take away British companies that were being used to exploit Uganda for resources. How Polish pilots helped to prevent the invasion of Britain during World War II nor how Britain and France failed to meet the support agreement. The facts that were never recorded and the facts that were recorded but destroyed. John Wilkes Booth's brother saved Lincoln's son Robert Todd Lincoln. Robert Lincoln was traveling by train from New York to Washington. He got off the train during a stop at Jersey City. He saw that the platform was extremely crowded in order to be polite and wait his turn. He pressed his back to one of the train's cars. About 30-60 seconds later the train started to move. The train wiped him down and dropped him into the space between the platform and train. Abe's son would have died if a stranger hadn't yanked him out of the hole by his collar. The stranger was Edwin Booth a good actor in the 19th century and the brother of John Wilkes Booth. John Wilkes Booth was the guy that killed Abe only a few years later. Whoa. You made it to the end, you're a ducking beast, I'll cut you a deal, smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh, it's free and that's a great price.